Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the Skymaster PC21. This is video number two in the build series and uh, moving along at a good pace. So stay tuned and we will dive back into the build of this awesome aircraft. Okay, so we are diving back into our wings. We're gonna finish up the one wing. We're gonna get the other wing finished. And uh, then we also have to install the front gear. That's the focus of this episode. And I also wanna get the, go the, the front gear doors hooked up as well. Let's hop back into that left wing that we've been working on the last episode and keep going on. All right, so. Uh, the owner decided to make a mid-build change and switch to MKS servos. So I didn't, don't think I included that in the last video, but anyways, we are putting MKS servos in this aircraft, not the JRs that we had allocated for it. Uh, last video, we had just finished off the horn. That last video was just recorded. So we're actually, this horn is still not, uh, not dry or, or cured or anything like that. And uh, so we're doing that. Flaps is the next thing we're gonna focus on. So we have to focus on the internal linkage. Uh, what we need to do there is we need to get that servo installed and also mark our center line on the wing and the surface. Now we have to mark it on the wing because we need to cut a hole right here for our linkage to come through. And we need to mark it on the flap surface so we know where to put that horn. Now what we wanna do is we wanna try and get that, uh, that flap so we're getting as much mechanical advantage as possible. Uh, this is kind of a similar setup to the F-18s that I built before as well too. So nothing too crazy complicated here. But the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our end on like normal. We'll get that other MKS 9930 installed and uh, we'll start working on our flap setup on this wing. All right guys, so working on the flap servo here. Now one thing, my suggestion to you is when you're doing stuff like this, don't just drop it in and assume you're right. Uh, what you wanna try and do is get it um, perpendicular to our hinge line here. So uh, this flap, when it goes in, it's got some movement to it. So what I do is I take a straight edge and we're the wrong way right now, but basically line it up to the flap and then get our servo lined up to be perpendicular to our line of the flap here. And so the servo is installed like that and then we draw a straight line again, same thing. So now we've got a nice straight line to follow to install our horns and everything for the flap system. So this is the edge of our servo and we can draw that same line that's in line with the actual horn there to parallel the servo line. All right, so we've pretty much got everything figured out here. I like to do this for these builds on the Skymaster because then other people have a baseline to go on. So you can see the slot we cut there. And uh, I think we pretty much got her nailed on the first try. Uh, we may have to go a couple millimeters lower as I'll show you a side view here in a second. That horn uh, as it rotates almost hits the bottom. I don't know if the focus will work, but anyways, you can kind of see the carbon horn there and that's about our full flat travel right there. So I think it's gonna work out awesome. I'll take a measurement of those as well too and I'll show you guys the measurement. So you've got a reference point to go off of. I just took a measurement again and we are eight millimeters up from the flat and eight millimeters out. So it's eight and eight is the, uh, the measurement that uh, we're using. So now with that horn glued, with this horn glued, we really can't touch the wing at all for the rest of the night until tomorrow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on and start focusing on the front landing gear while we wait for the parts on this wing to cure. Uh, once this is cured, so tomorrow, then we start getting into putting our pivot hardware on, which is actually nice big hardware, which is different for Skymaster. Usually they use really skinny stuff. So we've got nice big hardware for here. We've got our covers, our aileron linkage, and then our flap linkage. Now the flap linkage is gonna take a little bit of uh, massaging to get figured out. 
you want to try and get the servo arm as straight as possible at full flap. So we kind of want the linkage to be all nice and straight when we're kind of in that position right there, which hopefully we can do with this setup. We'll see how that all pans out though. So next step, start taking a look at the front landing gear. All right, so we've got the main gear removed from the, or the nose gear removed from the aircraft and we got the leg out. Now it is an eight millimeter pin like we suspected. So it's a fairly easy swap. The electron pin was too long. So we needed to remove this much from the electron pin, which is uh, about 12 millimeters. So that's how much we've taken off approximately right there. So hopefully that pins the right length. Doesn't go into the leg a ton, but uh, took a little bit of manipulation to get it out, but we did manage to get it removed. So uh, I'm not sure the dimensional change on the Electron uh, nose gear compared to the stock one, but uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, operate this gear now and line it up beside each other and see how different it actually is. All right, so a little more info on fitting this front gear. You need to open up the uh, opening here towards the top side of the plane just a little bit to uh, allow the electron gear to actually sit in there properly. And the other thing we've done is put our gear doors on, or at least the gear door servos on one side here. I'm gonna flip the plane over and I'll show you exactly what we did. All right, so you can see the slot right there. So we cut those slots in to allow the arm for the servo to come through. And that's gonna hook up to our gear door and operate those gear doors. So this is a pretty easy solution, actually worked out quite well. And we had these uh, servos from a previous plane, uh, the Hitec 7940TH. Uh, anyways, we uh, this is what we're using and they were already pre-mounted to the covering plates here Which is even better. So I took the covering off and uh, all I did was use wood glue first of all on this and uh, Once I had it in the right place Then I used CA around the perimeter and that'll allow the wood glue to cure as well, too So a uh, nice simple solution I already had the horns mounted and uh, the hole and everything done up for the uh, the ball joints. So that's how we're operating the front gear door. I've already pre-programmed these as well too uh, in the controller and uh, did that just to make it easier and kind of get an idea of how things are working out. So I'm going to glue that other one in place next. This is the right one and uh, once that's done we can uh, get those uh, gear doors hooked up and uh, I'm just First of all, getting the gear doors done so we've got access to this area and then we'll do the uh, the actual landing gear and that'll make sure that uh, when the gear's installed, we don't have any conflicts with the gear door operating system. All right guys, so we've got the linkages set up for the front doors. That turned out very, very well. I'm very happy with that. And uh, what I've done here for the front gear is I want to do a couple things, but first of all, we need to get the position correct. So I've kind of got the gear mocked up, uh, marked one hole, drilled one hole, and now we've got the option of, I'll show you here, kind of adjusting the gear a little bit, okay? So we're as centered as my eye can get, but what we need to do in this situation is we need to retract that gear see where it sits in the opening and adjust it so it's centered. So that's gonna get us our center location. So once we got that figured out, then we'll move on to the next step, which is I want to lift this nose gear up just a little bit. And to do that, I'm gonna put some washers underneath the tabs for the front gear. Now there's a couple reasons I wanna do that. Number one, uh, this nose, whole nose setup is shorter than the stock setup as we talked about because of trunnion difference. So if we can make up some of that ground on the front, that will be good. I mean, the whole plane is gonna sit a little bit lower, which for a turbine aircraft would be totally fine, but something with a prop like this turbo prop, we wanna keep that prop off the ground as much as possible. Now on the back end, we've got the option of adding a bit more air to those oleos, to the struts. On the front here though, I think on purpose, uh, Skymaster sets this strut up very, very stiff. So uh, it hardly has any compression, which is totally fine. Again, we wanna keep that prop away from the ground, but we've also lost 
about a quarter inch maybe uh, in this nose. So if you can make up some of that with gear position, that will definitely be helpful. Now we don't know that until we actually get this gear retracted to see how everything sits inside that opening. Uh, I mean, if we get it retracted, it sits in the opening, we can bring everything out, outbound a little bit more, then we'll definitely do it. Okay, so we've got everything hooked up with the gear. Um, I had to do a little bit more of a cutout here for the retract uh, steering servo to actually have room uh, to fit in there. So that was done. Now we come across the problems that I was kind of expecting. If we retract this gear, you'll see that we hit the gear opening. Now that is all based on us having to slide this gear backwards to allow clearance right here for that leg. So what do we need to do in this case? Well, right now this leg, when we extend it, you'll see is just touching this front edge right there. So we're gonna have to take this gear and slide it forward more and create a bit of a cutout here. And I'll just show you there, the leg is tight to the opening. I mean, it's just touching, we'll say. Um, so in the meantime though, I'm going to have an issue with these lights hitting the fuselage. So what I'm gonna do is just take these, bend them out like this so that we can still operate this gear. And uh, once we get the position set properly and everything, then we'll worry about spacing this gear out a little bit more as much as we can. And uh, that should solve all of our problems. So I'm going to undo that, uh, that screw that we've got holding it bend these lights out and we're gonna slide that forward a bit more. All right, so we've got the gear reinstalled. We've used the same holes for that one right there as the original gear. And uh, we would need to drill new front holes. So also added a bit of a cutout in the front. And uh, you can see I took the lights out and bended them forward. So let's see what happens now. Okay, so that works. Um, the wheel does, I think it was before because there was tire marks on the back uh, opening here before, but uh, the tire runs along that back opening, which I think is going to be just fine. It's a good compromise. And we'll just try extending it and see what happens. Gear down. Yeah, no issues at all. So one of the things to look at now, if we're happy with this location, is we gotta, again, put some spacers underneath and uh, lift that up. And then also what we need to do is probably get rid of a little bit of the wood there, that spot right there for the steering arm. So let's retract the gear one more time and see what happens. Yeah, you can see there, the steering arm is hitting, so we'll mark that off and we'll dremel that part down as well too. But looking at this, we got lots of clearance for our arms actuating the doors. We've got lots of clearance to lift this gear out more for spacing for the lights. So I think that is gonna work out awesome. All right, so I think we got all of our problems solved here. I added a, I think that's probably I don't know what dimension it is, but it's the same dimension as the existing gear plates. Now the existing gear plates are hardwood and uh, hardwood ply. And then we've got a piece of aircraft ply that I've added on top. So now we've doubled the uh, thickness of the gear plates, glued the spacers in place as well. So that's all done. So now we've got the lights returned back to where they were. Uh, we've got just a hair of a gap underneath there. So the, uh, the steering can steer no problem. And then if we retract everything, that works and we can still close the doors. That's awesome. So we ended up with obviously a little bit of a hole here, not a big deal and a little bit of a, uh, well, the, the factory hole back here. So anyways, front gear is pretty much installed. Um, we've got uh, a couple other little things to do, set up the gear doors, which we won't do right now. And uh, steering servo, we're just waiting on servo order and uh, we'll be able to get that uh, steering servo installed. So front gear, awesome. All right, so we've been working on our engine mounting here. Uh, 
the reason we're not moving on with the other stuff is because we're waiting on servos and those are supposed to be here tomorrow. And I figured I would start on the engine mounting just so we can kind of get this laid out, uh, pull the engine out and then continue working on with other stuff. And then uh, we'll continue on with the wings as well too in this episode. So uh, engine's pretty straightforward. Um, the one thing that uh, you wanna make sure you're doing with turbo props is not putting any uh, weird forces on them, right? This whole uh, system, the whole engine from front to back, front to back, whatever way you're looking at it, uh, you wanna try and keep that as in line as possible. So our front plate here is basically fixed. Um, that's a flat surface, the gearbox sits against it, and uh, we're kinda stuck with this. Now, what I've done here is a bit of a systematic approach. Put the engine kind of in place, figured out what I needed to sand out here uh, on the sides, did a little bit of sanding, more fitting, more fitting, more fitting. And then I um, eventually traced out the engine rail mounting here and sanded out to that pencil mark right there, which allowed room for the, um, the clamp fasteners to, to fit in there. So. This gap you're seeing here right now is a gap that we need to fill. We wouldn't wanna take this, drill holes, and cinch this thing down because again, our angle and everything is set by our front mounts. Now, the front is pretty much bolted in here. We've got our two top bolts done up. The bottom one we haven't done up yet because we have to pull that fuel fitting off, that Festo fitting, before we can access it. But I've also, uh, grinded out the uh, top cover where we needed to so we could get the top cover installed. Now, we will need to grind out openings for the exhaust, so th this is just the, the first steps of this whole engine fitting. And then with our top cover in place, we can take our nose cone and pop that guy on and see how she fits. And it fits beautifully. So there we are tightened down We've got probably a one and a half to two millimeter gap all the way around and it fits absolutely awesome right there. There we go. There's a good shot of the gap. So yeah, it looks really good. Happy with how this is all fitting. And a really nice kit on Skymaster's part here for uh, getting this turbo prop mounted. So the next thing and kind of the last thing we need to do with engine fitting is uh, come up with our spacers that are going to go underneath the rails. I think those are one eighth inch ply. Um, so we're going to, I'll find out what size we need to tuck underneath there and we'll cut a couple uh, plywood spacers, get those glued down in place and uh, we'll kind of get the engine fit 100% and then we'll pull the engine out and we can continue on with everything else. Uh, for cutting the openings here. What I'll end up doing is doing a trace of the exhaust. And the nice thing to do with this is we can have the engine sitting like it is right now, put the trace up here, trace it out on the bottom section, uh, cut that out, do the same thing on the opposite side. And then we can put our top part on, uh, do the exact opposite, and we'll have a nice tight uh, output for the exhaust. And then from there, we'll open it up where we need to. So we wanna get this as accurate as possible first, not doing this now, and then we'll open it up as we need to. So we have about a, a centimeter gap, so that's uh, about 10 millimeters all the way around that exhaust uh, stack. So next thing I'm gonna work on is the little spacers. We're gonna get that uh, finalized. All right, an engine is finished as far as the installation goes. We have, uh, everything's fastened down. Uh, our spacers are installed. I used just a little bit of CA to wick underneath the spacers as a final step. And uh, I ended up using three millimeter blind nuts uh, underneath obviously. And uh, we had some nice thick washers and obviously three millimeter bolts. So that is installed and ready to go. She's nice and comfortable and level. There's no sideways or weird pressures or anything going on. So. That, uh, that looks really good. Um, I did put the 
top on, put the nose cone on, still fits great, so that's perfect. So what we'll do now is we'll pull that engine out um, at some point here and uh, that'll allow us access to do everything else that we need to do in this engine compartment. We will be doing some heat treating and stuff on this, uh, this engine compartment, so we're gonna be putting some BVM uh, ceramic uh, paint probably throughout pretty much the whole thing. And we'll be doing some, uh, some heat treatment stuff on the top hatch as well, uh, just to make sure that we don't have any issues with, uh, with too much heat. So that is a very, very successful portion of this build, also complete. All right, so wing-wise, what we're doing here is we need to get, as a final step, we got three things to do on this wing. So, well, actually four. But we've got our linkages to set up. So aileron linkage, a flap linkage. Uh, you can see here a shot of how everything worked out. So that was awesome. Uh, we still got to do our power and lead hookup for the flap servo. Then we have to put our covers over top and put our bolts through on the wing. And then we've got to put our, uh, our cover plates over top of those surfaces. And then as a last step, we have to do our wiring harness as well too. So quite a few steps still to do on this one wing. Other wing we haven't done anything to except the flap hinging, but uh, we'll move into getting this wing fin finished up. All right, we're back on the wing. We're gonna get the aileron set up, but we need to change out our setup horn and install some aluminum horns. So picked up some Hangar 9 Futaba arms today, and these will be a great replacement for the plastic ones that we just installed on there to get our line and everything set up. So I drilled a hole for our clevis. Hopefully that shows up. There we go. So we made a uh, matching set of aluminum horns. So we'll get that installed and then we'll get our clevis installed as well too. Uh, we can't do our final on the clevis until we get our wing connection done up because then we'll be able to plug that into the, uh, the central box and be able to zero out that servo. But we'll take the servo out, get this installed. And then while we're working on servos, we'll get the flap one out. Uh, we'll do the wiring there and uh, we'll probably move into the wiring on the wing so we can get this wing finalized. All right, so we've got our first wing connector done up here. This is the wing connector for the ailerons, flap, and gear. And what that allowed us to do is plug in our aileron servo into our receiver setup. So I talk about this all the time in all my builds. This is why I use the Ashlock connectors because I can use this pin uh, connector on the wing side and that allows me just to plug in a servo connector and makes programming and everything really, really nice because once you put that extension on, you're just left with bare wires. So what we've done here is, as we talked about, we put the new servo arm on, so that's all done, programmed into the center, and I'm just setting up the linkage here. So we've got the linkage on the surface side, the aileron surface. We've got our length adjusted, and the clevises haven't been tightened down yet on the rod. And then we've got just the end of the clevis plugged in to the aileron servo. And what that allows me to do is to adjust our aileron travel. So if I, so if I do down aileron, we have our travel and our linkage and all that stuff's now set up and good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut a piece of carbon rod that fits over top of the 440 linkage. We're gonna get this length set up perfectly. And uh, then we will put some high saw on here, slide the carbon rod over top and get this linkage all set up perfectly. And I uh, will have a nice strong setup. All right, so we are going to glue this carbon rod on. This is actually a square piece of carbon rod Picked this up not too long ago at the hobby store and I thought that was pretty cool for making linkages. So, and it also fits over the 440 rod very nicely. And we've got lots of room there. So mixed up some high saw 9462, uh, heated it up with a heat gun. Now, even if in this case, if, uh, if it wasn't clumpy when it came out of the tube, I would heat it up just to make it more thin to allow it to work better in this situation just so you can get it in all the threads and it flows better. Okay, so we put that on there. And I like to do half of it. Try and get it inside the carbon is the goal. 
and then flip it around and just finish it. Now you can feel when the carbon's full of high salt because it gets smooth and it doesn't uh, bang around. And then what we'll do is we'll put this side on. And then we'll just check our centering because our radio is still on. Or a little bit off. Our carbon was a little bit big, just a fraction. There we go. So now this uh, whole setup, once it's actually cured, will be nice and strong. And uh, there ends up being really zero movement in this carbon rod when it's all cured. And uh, it's just a nice, strong way to, uh, to do up these linkages, and it's kind of the way I've always done them, is glue them. I know some people don't glue them, but then you're, uh, you're not getting as much strength as you, I, I think you could. So anyways, that's how we do our linkages, and uh, we'll get this set up, double check our aileron setup, and uh, then we'll be ready to put our, uh, our hatch cover on. Also have the linkage all done here as well. I don't know if I showed that, but uh, that's all finished and centered and all that stuff. So next and kind of last things, oh yeah, we have got the cover installed as well too. And I got our slot for the servo done up. Uh, so next two things to do is we've got to get our arm fairings, arm covers in place over top of our linkages for the flaps. And then we've got to also get our flap servo and everything set up as well too. So uh, first thing I wanna do I think is get the covers set up, which means that we've gotta put our bolts and everything in place first. Now previously Skymaster would usually use like a two millimeter setup and what they've included on these flaps is a nice big three millimeter Allen key setup with uh, nylon lock nuts. So uh, nice stuff to see, good quality stuff, good quality hardware. Of course, it's a little bit bigger than uh, what we're used to, but uh, we'll have to drill that out and then use those guys on the linkages or arms or whatever they're called. All right, so just working on these fairing pieces. Uh, having done a bunch of F-18s from Skymaster, this stuff is all very, very similar when you're doing the, uh, the pods and stuff from the F-18. So you kind of trial and fitting this uh, as much as possible and uh, just do it slowly. There's usually a bunch of buildup on the opening part here. So I took a Dremel and sanded this down a whole bunch and you need to sand that down in order to make enough clearance to clear the bolt and the pivot portion itself. Um, also pay attention to things like there's the scale outline here on the wing. You can see it in the reflection. And uh, actually originally had this bolt, this pan head bolt coming in from this side. And it was a little bit difficult to line this up because everything was shifted over to the left. But uh, just turning that bolt around and there's a nut that goes on that side helped everything. So now we can tuck our forward portion all the way to the, the flap joint the rear portion tucks in nice and snug to the flap pivot system. And we're nice and in line there. And looking good on the side. The only actual outside portion that I needed to sand down was this leading edge portion because the carbon kind of curves. And unless you sand this portion down, you can't actually tuck this rear portion close enough to, uh, to make it look good. It was sitting like this before, and that's not correct. It's supposed to tuck all the way up like this. So we'll fit these guys on the other pivot point as well. And uh, what I'll probably do with these, the same thing I did on the, uh, some of the previous F-18s, is we'll just use shoe goop to get this locked down and into place, and it holds really well. 
And uh, if it ever needs to come off, then it's, uh, then it, it's possible to get it off but uh, it has really good holding power. All right, so we've got our flap servo basically done. The, uh, the servo itself is plugged into the wire, so that's all complete, we're reinstalled. And uh, what we've accomplished here is when this arm is straight like this, we are basically at our full flap, which is 38 millimeters. So 38 millimeters, which is measured right there as per the manual. And we're really stinking close to our hole. Actually, we're plugged right in there. So um, this end is fixed, the, uh, the end on the servo. So we've put some CA on the threads and the, and the golden clevis. Uh, this end hasn't been done yet because we are wanting to adjust that. So anyways, that portion is done. I think it's gonna line up absolutely awesome and it's gonna work out good. And the, the key here is trying to get that flap linkage as straight as possible. So when you're at full flaps, uh, you have as much mechanical advantage with your flap servo as possible. If you have that arm at full flaps like this and your, uh, operating rod is coming off at a 90 degree angle and there's force, your servo is gonna be dealing with that force all the time. If you get this arm nice and straight, what happens is mechanically it's just pushing uh, back on the output shaft. It's not actually fighting against the motor of the flap. So most aircraft you can kind of get this set up, but uh, sometimes it, it can be a bit of a challenge, but on this one it worked out very well. So last thing to do here is to get the fairings installed. We'll just pop that flap servo back in like this. <clears throat> Actually, we'll just go all the way in. Uh, so yeah, last thing is to get the fairings installed and glued in place. Uh, as I mentioned previously, all I'm gonna do in this uh, situation is use shoe goop, and uh, that's gonna work awesome. I'll probably end up sanding this down a little bit, so we've got a little bit of bite area here. But uh, if you were to use high saw in this situation um, and you ever have to get that off, you're never getting it off. So you're either gonna be cutting the, uh, the little covering piece over here to get at those bolts. So you want, the, you want to make this uh, not a temporary, but a removable and serviceable item. All right, so last step on this wing is we've got our hatch cover for the flap servo installed. We've got the forward uh, fairing pieces glued. Now we just used high uh, shoe goop to glue those guys on, and we're just waiting for those to cure before we glue the back ones on. And I just don't wanna be messing with these while they're curing. Uh, I, we did sand the wing a little bit where this portion right here, the flat portion or the filled in portion, um, contacts the wing. So this is the leading edge of this fairing and that's gonna make sure that we get better contact and it doesn't uh, come up very easily. Now the back ones really, because they don't contact or cover up the pivot point, these could be glued on with a more permanent method, so we'll keep an eye on those as well too and see how it all works out, but uh, we're not gonna touch those until the other fairing cures. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the other wing. We're basically doing exactly the same stuff on this wing as we did that one. The benefit is we're not doing any videoing on this wing, so we can just knock it out of the park and get it done. All right guys, so I was chatting with uh, Jet Cat USA uh, with Danny the other day and uh, just telling him about the prop bolt for the SP10 turbo prop. Now a lot of times what happens with these scenarios is the manufacturer never hears about issues like this so um, it's nice to have the videos and it's nice to actually communicate with them because they don't know there's a problem even though this turbo prop's been installed in many of these aircraft before. So anyways, the stock bolt is too short as we've talked about I think in the video already. So we sourced a longer bolt. So this one that I got is a 70 millimeter bolt. It's a 10 millimeter metric times 1.5 threads. Uh, this is the stock one here. The existing prop covers this entire shoulder on the bolt. And then we've got our end washer 
and our back of our prop, our back plate. So those two things come to about here, and then we've got about uh, maybe five eighths of the rest of the bolt to thread in to the actual engine itself. Uh, previously on this one, it wouldn't even grab a single thread. If I took the prop uh, washer off, then it would grab one thread and uh, which is definitely not enough. So this is the, uh, the amount that's grabbing. We could go with an 80 mil one, there's enough depth in there, but this is a good solution. So just keep that in mind. JetCat doesn't currently have a solution for it, or at least that uh, JetCat USA knew about. Uh, they probably will source longer bolts and have them as an option because this is a very common engine to use on the SkyMaster PC and also with the prop that SkyMaster supplies. So just a tidbit of info for you. Okay, so we got all the fairings glued on on the left wing. We're just repeating the same thing on the other, uh, the right wing. So these are all glued in place and done. We've just used shoe goop to goop those in place. This one wasn't quite holding well. So I just peeled up this side, put more shoe goop in there, and uh, we're going to let that cure and it should be good. Uh, last thing to do is to put our pylon for our drop tank on here, and then this wing will be done. All right, so just doing a mock-up here of the prop and everything to make sure our bolt's long enough. Now this is the stock bolt, and without our prop, uh, the washer on the end here, you can see that it just grabs with about one turn or one thread, which of course is no good, and we don't have our washer on there as well. Now if we take our new bolt and put it in there, with the washer, you can see that we're grabbing by about five eighths, maybe even three quarters, but uh, it's a nice amount of material to hold this whole assembly together. And it's a nice big wrench, 17 millimeter wrench on the end. And she looks good. So we'll get that nose cone on and we'll take a final look at it. Okay guys, so, just got everything attached here to do a mock-up, cones installed, and uh, she looks absolutely awesome. Uh, nice spacing everywhere, and uh, really, really impressed with this, uh, this whole setup here. So uh, the engine is effectively done as well too, as far as the basics of the install goes, and uh, all the fine details, like all of the plumbing and everything, obviously we still have to do, but the positioning of the engine is thumbs up. All right, I also picked up, because we're talking about engines, also picked up some Oatly flame protector. So this is a plumbing thing. Uh, I can get it at Home Depot, it's just a heat shield. So this is the product that we're going to line the top of the engine hatch with. So we're just gonna glue it to the top. The primary area that we're really concerned with is from the heating area. So pretty much the front bolt section to about halfway down the actual turbine section. It's mainly the exhaust where a lot of that heat comes up from. So it's really gonna be kind of in this area here, uh, which is our primary concern. So we'll cover that in a future episode, but uh, we do have this now in stock. It's just a, a thin black blanket material. All right, guys, and that is going to be everything for episode number two of the SkyMaster PC21 build. In this build, we got the wings wrapped up. We got the engine, uh, the core of the engine installed, positioned, and all that stuff done. Uh, next video, we are going to start moving on to the other surfaces, so the horizontal stabs and vertical stab, and uh, we're going to get those done. And after that, we're gonna to start to move into the rest of the parts of the plane. So that's probably gonna be the focus of the next video is those surfaces. We'll see what else we can get done in about a 30 minute time period. Guys, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. If you are a regular watcher and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below. Thanks guys for watching the build series and we will see you in the next video. All right, we uh, <laughs> focus. Who saw?